This large property is the base for the second episode of our newest series, Religious Decline, where we take a look at disused structures of God in an effort to showcase the struggling ways of religion in the current day society. Once upon a time, this vast complex was a convent in Ireland, which is another word for a Catholic school. The building was designed very carefully with a strong Catholic theme, and this was noticeable as we wandered the empty rooms. We also find a preserved chapel which was one of the gems we explored during our short stay in Ireland a few weeks ago. Be sure to come with us in this video to see what the convent has to offer. Christianity's central place in British culture is looking increasingly under threat, 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 threat. It's early in the morning on our second day in Ireland. As you can see, differently to the previous urban exploration trip we did last year, this time we are sleeping in a youth hostel, but we're dealing with our hastily made tent in not the ideal territory. Remember the asylum in our last episode? Well, we're still there and have spent the night in the woods beside the property. Eventually it's time to finally leave the massive site as we prepare for another full day of exploring. First up today we are taking a look at this large vacant convent which is clearly abandoned from the boarded up windows we could see from afar. This wasn't how we wanted the first act of our day to go. After falling from a high wall, we were then forced to burrow our way through the thick foliage that was covering what used to be the garden of the school. Inevitably, we reached the front of the convent, which would have been a common sight for the past students, but not like this. Nowadays, the building is sealed up tight and almost no natural light is getting in. The only exception are a few windows on one side, which will make more sense to us when we find our way inside. Soon enough, we find a simple access point and we can begin looking through the facility's bottom level. The first thing we notice is the darkness. Due to the wooden boards covering every window, only our torchlight helps us see and unluckily we were having issues with the torch at this point in our trip. It wasn't the usual brightness that we anticipated so we had to make do with what we could see. Tall, arched corridors are an indication of the structure's Catholic nature. We have seen designs like this before at a Catholic boarding school in England. In fact, we spotted a few similarities between the two buildings. Amazingly, the convent was built in the 1860s, but still has so many original details inside. On the bottom level we found many classrooms, and we could tell this was their function because of the blackboards in each room. This makes sense as the religious school closed down in the 90s after taking in too short a number of students. 
as you can probably tell by our distinct lack of knowledge about this one, we are failing to find a massive amount of history about the site. What we can find online about this property is that the locals really desire its transformation. On many websites we can see campaigns for funding towards the building, but a lot of these were from years ago, and sadly it doesn't seem that they brought in a lot of success. The central staircase of the school is a much better example of the building's beautiful Catholic architecture. The banister is carved with detail and the huge arched windows beside it stick with the religion's theme impressively. On the second floor of the building were simply empty rooms. We presume these would have been the dormitories for the students, but no beds nor furniture of any sort remained. Therefore, we headed to a grand set of doors at the end of the corridor. Inside, we entered into a special chapel hall, where the altar space was built with hand-placed tiling emphasising the precision and care that went into the room's construction. This was the reason for some of the windows being not boarded. All of the windows that weren't sealed up contained stained glass in an attempt to preserve its colour and beauty. These stained glass windows were some of the most detailed we have seen in churches and boasted so many colours. Although the little chapel was bare, it was a beautiful find and a great contrast from the other dark regions of the convent. drop-down wall to separate the actual church from its balcony so this is like a little separate room I have no idea why they would do that but maybe the church was never filled so they didn't really need the space and this room could have been used for something else With our torchlight dramatically fading, we figured it would be best to exit the site safely because we knew we had seen the highlights of the deteriorating school. After many plans and schemes appear to have failed, it is likely that the building will continue suffering. We can hope that the chapel at least may be saved in the future. Thanks for watching episode 2 of Religious Decline and episode 2 from our island trip. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like. See you next time.